Okay, so we're going to move on to part two of this video, uh, working through some examples uh, of things that we talked about in part one. So directions for the first example say, if possible, find in part A the complement of 4 pi over 5, and in part B the supplement of 2 pi over 5. So in part A, if we want to find the complement of 4 pi over 5, there should be some angle measure x such that when I add it to 4 pi over 5, um, that should be equal to, if those two angles are complements, then the sums of their measures have to add up to uh, 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. So uh, if we solve this equation here for x, that's going to be pi over 2 minus 4 pi over 5. And for me to subtract those two fractions, I need a common denominator. So pi over 2 becomes 5 pi over 10 minus 4 pi over 5, which is 8 pi over 10. So that difference winds up being negative 3 pi over 10, which is a problem for us because we said earlier that for two angles to be complements, um, both angles have to have a positive measure, and that's not the case here. So this here is not possible. Okay, on to part B. So the supplement of 2 pi over 5, so if I take some angle y and add it to 2 pi over 5, for those two angles to be supplements, they have to add up to 180 degrees, or in this case, pi radians. So when we solve for y, uh, it's going to be pi minus 2 pi over 5. Uh, and when we get a common denominator, our angle y is going to wind up being 3 pi over 5. And since that angle is positive, uh, that is going to be the supplement of 2 pi over 5. Okay, uh, on to the next example. So directions here say to express the angle in radian measure. So if we're going to go from degree measure to radian measure, again, I need the degrees to cancel. So I'm going to put a degree measure in the denominator and a radian measure in the numerator. Uh, and we know that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So if I want to simplify this, um, <clears throat> the greatest common factor uh, of 135 degrees and 180 degrees is going to be 45 degrees. So 45 goes into 135 three times, and 45 goes into 180 four times. So when I multiply across, uh, we wind up getting that to be equal to 3 pi over 4 radians. Okay, if we want to go from uh, radian measure to degree measure, so that measurement is in terms of radians. I need a radians on bottom and a degree measure on top. We know that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Um, so I'm going to multiply that angle in radian measure by 180 degrees over pi radians. So when I simplify this, the factors of pi cancel. 3 goes into 180 60 times, and then we multiply across 5 times 60 degrees is 300 degrees. So that's how we convert from uh, degrees to radians, and in the second example, from radians to degrees. All right, uh, next set of examples um, ask us to sketch the following angles in standard position. Okay, so the first angle we have is negative pi over 6. What I'm going to recommend you do, uh, at least early on until you get familiar with radian measure, because um, it's likely that your exposure to trig up to this point has been entirely in terms of degree measure. I think it's a good idea for us to take um, angles in radian measure and at least early on write them in degree measure in a measure that you're more comfortable and uh, are more familiar with. Okay, so if we take negative pi over 6, uh, if I want to write that in degree measure, I'm going to multiply that by 180 over pi. So the pi's cancel. Um, and then 6 goes into 180 30 times. So this is going to wind up becoming negative 30 degrees. Okay, so if we want to draw that angle in standard position, The initial side is going to be on the positive x-axis. Because the angle measure is negative, that tells me that I'm going to be rotating clockwise. 
okay? And 30 degrees is like a third of the way between zero and negative 90. So we're not gonna get a protractor out. You just need to eyeball like what a third of that uh, measure is. So for me, that looks like it's about in there. And then I'm going to draw an arrow indicating the direction of rotation. So I'm drawing that arrow uh, in a clockwise direction to indicate that that angle measure there is going to be negative. Okay, when we do the same thing with the next one, five pi over three, again, for right now, it's probably a good idea to write that in uh, degree measure. So I'm gonna multiply again by 180 over pi. So the pi's cancel, three goes into 180 60 times, and five times 60 again is 300 degrees. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a coordinate plane. If I wanna sketch that angle in standard position, the initial side is gonna be on the positive x-axis. And then <clears throat> because the angle measure is positive, we're going to rotate counterclockwise. So we just have to eyeball where 300 degrees is. So if I rotate, a quarter of the way around, that's gonna put me at 90. If I go halfway around, that's gonna put me at 180. If I go three quarters of the way around, that puts me at 270. And then I just wanna go 30 degrees past that. So to me, that looks like it's about right in there. Uh, and again, I'm gonna draw the arrow on that angle indicating the direction of rotation. So that right there is gonna be about uh, where 300 degrees is located. Okay. For three, we have seven pi. Now, for the previous two examples, um, I asked you to convert those angles in radian measure to degree measure. I actually think in this particular case, it's easier to sketch the graph if we leave the angle in uh, radian measure. Okay, so again, to draw the angle in standard position, the initial side is gonna be on the positive x-axis. Because the angle measure is positive, we're gonna rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So if I make one complete rotation, that's going to make my angle be two pi. If I make a second complete rotation, the resulting angle is four pi. If I do a third one, the resulting angle is six pi. And then I'm gonna do like one half of another rotation, which is going to put the terminal side of that angle uh, along the negative x-axis. Okay, so that angle right there is going to correspond to uh, seven pi. All right, so let's do um, two examples with coterminal angles. So the directions ask us to find a positive and a negative angle that is coterminal with the given angle. And for number one, the angle that we're given is 240 degrees. So again, we don't have to find all angles that are coterminal, we just have to give an example of a positive angle that is coterminal and a negative angle that is coterminal. So I can find a positive angle that is coterminal with 240 by taking that angle measure and adding 360 degrees to it. So if we take 240 plus 360, 240 plus 360 is going to give us an angle measure of 600 degrees. Okay, so that angle will be coterminal. Again, the initial side and the terminal side are going to be in the same location. And you can graph that out uh, to verify that. If we want to find a negative angle that is coterminal with the given angle, we can take our given angle, which is 240. If I subtract 360 degrees, so 240 minus 360, that would give me an angle measure of negative 120. So that would be an example of uh, a negative angle that is coterminal with the given angle. Okay, for number two, we have an angle in radian measure. So instead of adding 360 or multiples of 360 and subtracting 360 or multiples of 360, um, this time we're gonna add or subtract multiples of two pi. So if I wanna find a positive angle that is coterminal with the given angle, I can take 11 pi over five and add two pi. So when I add two pi, that is like adding 10 pi over five. So 11 pi over five and 10 pi over five 
add up to 21 pi over 5. Um, if we want to find a negative angle that's coterminal, we're going to take the angle 11 pi over 5 and subtract 2 pi. Well, when I subtract 2 pi, that's subtracting 10 pi over 5. That gives me pi over 5, which I could also use as a positive angle that is coterminal with that given angle. If I want to find a negative angle that's coterminal with that angle, I have to take 11 pi over 5. Sorry, I have to take pi over 5 and subtract 2 pi from that. So pi over 5 minus 2 pi, which is subtracting 10 pi over 5, is going to give me negative 9 pi over 5. So we get that by taking the original angle and subtracting 2 pi twice or subtracting 4 pi, which is a multiple of 2 pi. Okay, so that would be an example of uh, a positive angle and a negative angle that's coterminal with a given angle. So if you give me 21 over pi, 21 pi over 5 or pi over 5 for that positive angle, um, both of those would work just fine. Okay, last set of examples is going to deal with the um, special right triangles that we looked at. So for number one, we're asked to find the missing sides in that isosceles right triangle where the legs, which are the sides opposite the 45 degree angles, are x, and the hypotenuse, which is uh, the side opposite the right angle, is 18. I'm going to show you two ways that you can work through this. Okay, the first way that you can work through this, and it wouldn't be the way that I would recommend, but it works just fine nonetheless, uh, is to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side lengths x. So if we take the sum of the squares of the two legs, x squared plus x squared, that's going to be equal to 18 squared, which makes 2x squared equal to 18 squared x squared is then uh, 18 squared over 2. And then if we want to solve for x, we can take the square root of both sides. Typically, we would put a plus or minus in front of the radical on the right-hand side. But since x corresponds to a side length, a side length has to be positive. So uh, we only want to worry about the positive root. Uh, in this case. So x is going to be equal to, I can take the square root of that quotient and break it up into the square root of the numerator. So the square root of 18 squared is just 18 over the square root of the denominator, which is rad 2. And then I can rationalize that denominator multiplying the top and bottom by rad 2 over 2. So x becomes 18 rad 2 over 2 which makes x equal to 9 rad 2. And that's perfectly fine. That way of figuring out the length of the side x uh, works OK. I think a more efficient way to do it is to take what we went over earlier in the previous video. If we know the legs or the sides opposite um, the 45 degree angles are x. In a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, the hypotenuse is going to be x rad 2. So we can set x rad 2 equal to 18, which makes x equal to 18 over rad 2. And again, you would rationalize that denominator the same way that we did uh, on the left, and that's going to wind up simplifying to 9 rad 2. So I think it's a more efficient way uh, to figure out the length of the hypotenuse in this particular instance. Okay, on to the last example. So example number two uh, asks us to find the missing side lengths in a 30, 60, 90 triangle where the side opposite the 30 degree angle is x, the side opposite the 60 degree angle is 8, and the hypotenuse is y. So I, again, think the most efficient way to do this is if the side opposite the 30 degree angle is x, that means that the side opposite the 60 degree angle is going to be x rad 3. So I'm going to set x rad 3 equal to 8, which when I divide both sides by rad 3, we get x equal to 8 over rad 3. When I rationalize that denominator, 
we get x equal to 8 rad 3 over 3. And then once we have that side length for x being 8 rad 3 over 3, we know the hypotenuse y is 2 times the length of x, which is the side opposite the 30 degree angle, which is going to make y equal to, if I take 8 rad 3 over 3 and multiply it by 2, we get y equal to 16 rad 3 over 3. And those are the two missing sides for um, that right triangle. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Again, this is how I plan on uh, teaching things going forward. I'm going to post these videos to YouTube. So it'll be similar to like what teaching would, would, would look like in class. So hope you guys are well and healthy and we'll definitely be in touch soon. Take care.